This is AEDT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. In the series of video capsules, Dr. Davidson invites Dr. François Desjardins and Dr. Claude Lamontagne to discuss constructivist teaching and constructivist learning. I have uh, with me François Desjardins and Claude Lamontagne, two illustrious professors <laughs> that will be discussing constructivist learning or the constructivist teaching expertise viewed through their lens. The analysis questions for these video capsules are as follows. For a constructivist, what is the essence of learning? Viewed from the constructivist lens, is there such a thing as teaching? How do we know if our students really learn something from our teaching? And do you have some advice for course designers who want to prepare constructivist learning experiences? The body percept concept emerges. Baby is born. One possibility is that baby does not know that what he sees as his arm passes in front of him is, is his body. This is the outside world. Inside is the cognition of baby trying to make sense of the outside world. Progressively, baby starts noticing correlations. That's the cognitive science is going about self. So, notice this correlation between motor intentions, baby contracting muscles in ways that bring the arms in, in the visual field, and baby notices, cog baby's cognition notices, that there's a correlation between some ways of making muscles contract and this thing that passes in front of them. The correlation grows so strong that baby eventually says meaning. Now, is that social constructivism? Is this the idea of social go into baby facing baby? It's ridiculous. The whole idea is the growth of knowledge where hypotheses are made as to what is and conclusions are upheld for as long as refutation does not take place. This gives rise to baby identifying body and then realizing that what he sees as being body, about which he says me, also seems present in other objects that look like body. He calls them other people. He also realizes that as he starts yelling, mother comes. Like the so he says, me too, and it's a social me. And society you know, comes into the picture, and it grows and it grows. Now, whether it's individual or whether it's social, it's totally irrelevant. There are events that take place. And there is a process of making generalities as to what reality is. The generality of it grows until baby starts talking about other people, and some people have got the insight of talking about you know, social constructivism. But it's besides the point. Constructivism is about the dynamics of cognition, where hypotheses are made, where generalities are proposed, and where what happens to these generalities is they allow predictions to be made that either succeed or not, and when they succeed, nothing is gained. But when they fail, the possibility opens up of reformulating a greater generality, which will be held as a better truth, as a greater truth, and hopefully will be open to being refuted itself. Pathology arising when you start creating these things that are not open to refutation anymore, or that are so open to refutation that they get refuted all the time. You have the distinction between psychosis and neurosis. But, you know, mental health is the ability to allow part of what you believe is reality to be put to the test, to be refuted, which will give rise to the growth of knowledge. It's so simple, so obvious, but the problem is that its implication is that you can't design courses. The idea of change, which is fundamental, something has to be added in order to reach the specific meaning of what constructivist, um, the constructivist perspective is all about. And I think that the key concept in order to understand constructivism is the concept of the general nature of the knowledge to be learned or to be taught. If the knowledge at stake has no generality, uh, there's little point in referring to constructivism as being different from, from, from cramming. For instance, learning the multiplication tables, you know, 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, learning a nursery rhyme uh, does not require uh, anything that would uh, critically um, be called you know, constructivist. Um, so uh, the whole notion of constructivism in its essence 
rest on this idea that the knowledge has to be constructed. And by constructed, we mean um, some form of uh, generalization, some form of process that leads to knowledge that has some generality. To me, constructivism is not a way to learn or a way of teaching. Um, um, actually, I'll, I'll paraphrase uh, Glasserfeld's book title, Construct, Radical Constructivism, a, 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 a Way of Knowing. And, and I would even go actually a little, maybe a step further, and I'd say it, it is, constructivism is only one possible explanation of the nature of learning, dependent on a very specific definition of the nature of knowledge. Having stated this, then constructivism becomes a perspective. So what is learning in a constructivist perspective? Um, it is something that occurs within the learner. What is teaching in a constructivist perspective? It is anything that you can do to foster or maybe, maybe have some kind of chance of directing or, or, or impacting the direction of the learning. Um, can it be done more efficiently, effectively, economically and whatnot? That, that's possible, but I think that all of those things, the, all those strategies or this planning that we can do when it comes to the teaching, it's, it is, is very narrowly tied to are you actually provoking learning of the deep structure or deep learning, or are you sticking to surface learning and what you were talking about, you know, those little factoids. I mean, little factoids to be memorized can be easily taught, you know. I will tell you those things, I will help you memorize them, but that's it. That does not foster any kind of deep learning, deep change, deep structural change, deep cognitive change. So deep learning is far more difficult to achieve. And, and more importantly, it's almost in today's pedagogical context, we have no means of assessing that. And because we can't assess it, we can only assess surface structure learning, we can only assess shallow learning, it's very difficult to assess deep learning, therefore we teach to the test, we teach to the shallow learning, we teach to what we can assess. Can you memorize these? Can you regurgitate these things back on some kind of uh, 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 test? Therefore, we can measure it, and it fits our economical model of, of education, which we could get into the whole discussion of, of, of the, the political, economical model of, of, of education. But if you're talking about learning in itself, then I think that the whole idea of constructivism is a recognition that true learning is deep learning, and deep learning is not something that is easily assessed or measured because it's something that's completely internal. Can we do it? Can we teach for deep learning? I think we can do things to help deep learning. I think we can do things to foster deep learning. And I think that, that what, what, I mean, one of the things that always struck me about Claude, and I'll, I'll go back to some, some old stories where we walked in front of each other's class, and, and I would be in front of the class sort of like a, 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 a teaching, quote unquote, and all I'd hear is from the open door, was, bucket! And, and because I was lecturing, I would catch myself lecturing. And it's a natural thing. We tend to want to do. We lecture, the students listen. No, I teach, therefore they, they, they learn. No, big deal. Uh, that's not what is actually occurring, if, if, if I'm lucky if I didn't put them to sleep. Um, but by the same token, I think what, what Claude probably undersells from what he does, because I know what he does in his classrooms, um, is he doesn't teach, I'm sorry, but he provokes learning in a very deep sense because he challenges, as we were talking a while ago, but it's not just the fact that we're challenging, but it's a, it's a question that it, it, it's, I think what, what we strive to do is, is to create a specific set of barriers that if the students choose to go over those hurdles, go over those barriers, if they choose to, to, to do so and they choose to use whatever they've got to be able to overcome these challenges, then we are hoping and with experience we are fairly confident that because of the kinds of hurdles we've put in front of them, that they will actually, when they come out the other side, they will have learned something in the rough area that we were hoping they were going to learn something in. Um, and in that sense, is that constructivist teaching or constructivist learning? I think it's teaching learning from a constructivist perspective. Understanding that, that admitting right off the bat that no, I can't learn for them. No, I can't predict their learning. But maybe if I put, it, try, put up these hurdles, that kind of learning may occur. And I think it's, it's more of a recognition of our very small effect and small power as a teacher on the huge task that the learner has. What is important is that you realize that the knowledge construction occurs within the learner and nowhere else, and B, it can be fostered far better through discussion than it can through direct input.
The synthesis questions for this series are What is learning for a constructivist? What principles should a constructivist course designer adopt when preparing learning activities? How can we design to ensure that all learners gain something from the experience? And what can we infer about constructivist teaching from what constructivist learning is?